Hello students, welcome again for another session in this same unit, Child Development. This is our second session and uh, in our previous session we had introduction of the unit where we looked at the course objectives and uh, we also discussed aspects of development and the principles of growth and development. Uh, as we are beginning the unit, we said that <coughs> in this unit, uh, we will go through the process of growth and development from conception to adolescent stage. And uh, in our second session, I want us to go through prenatal development, the process of prenatal development. And I would like us to understand what happens and how the child develops from conception. So prenatal development is a stage of development, which is the very first <coughs> stage of development, which begins with fertilization or conception. And it's a stage of development which lasts for about 38 weeks. We are saying that the process begins with fertilization. I believe you can tell what fertilization is. Fertilization is a process by which the egg and the sperm cell fuse to form a zygote. Uh, the process of fertilization leads to pregnancy in which the mother will ex expect a boy child or a girl child. Or a mother may expect even a both in case of a multiple pregnancy, that in case of, um, uh, of twins. And it's also good to ask ourselves as runners, uh, how do the scenario of multiple pregnancies arise? How do the mother come to expect two, three, or even more after fertilization? Uh, that's something that uh, we should be able to, to establish. In some instances, a woman may release more than one egg, two or three, all of which become fertilized. And we have instances in which the fertilized egg may divide during the early stages of development, leading again to twins. And those kind of twins, we refer to them as identical twins. In, in, uh, uh, identical twins are usually made up of the same genetical materials and for that matter they end up being even of the same sex. But if it's an instance in which a woman body released more than one egg, two eggs, which become fertilized, in such a case one will expect twins and such twins are, say, are referred to as fraternal twins. These twins are not made up of the same genetical materials and they can be of different sex. In that case, we have a mother giving birth to a boy and a, and a girl child. So the determination of the sex of the child happens again at that time of fertilization where we have the sperm fusing with the, with the ovum to form a, a boy child or a girl child depending on the chromosomes that, uh, that will be derived from the sperm cell. So after fertilization, we say that the process of growth and development begins, and it's a period that we are saying lasts for 38 weeks. And this stage of development is divided into three phases. And at these phases, we have the zygote phase or period, we have embryo period and fetus period. So we'll be looking at what happens in each stage of uh, development. I'll begin with the first phase or first period, which is the zygote period, the first period which lasts for the shortest time. It lasts for about two weeks from fertilization. And it's important to understand what happens during those, these two weeks. Uh, very key things happen during these two weeks. When the sperm fuses with the ovum, they form a one-celled zygote cell. And we are saying that the zygote multiplies 
rapid rate during this stage. The zygote goes through the processes that we refer to as mitosis and meiosis and leads to formation of a, a bone-like structure that is known as a blastocyst. And this forms, forms in the fallopian tube because that's where fertilization takes place. So once a blastocyst is formed, which is a bone-like structure, it moves and drifts out of the fallopian tube down to the uterus. When it gets to the uterus, what happens is that it burrows deep into the wall of the uterus in a process that is known as implantation. Uh, this uh, key process that happens during this stage of development, that is implantation and also movement from the fallopian tube to the, to the uterus. Another key thing that happens in this stage of development is that uh, structures that feed and protect the developing organism begins to develop. What happens is like a foundation is laid for development of those structures that you see pregnancy last for the 38 weeks. And these structures are outlined here. There is amnion, there is yolk sac, umbilical cord, chorion, and placenta. These structures are important because you're saying that they feed, they protect the developing organism. And you can see this is something that begins to happen right from the first stage of prenatal development. So I would like us to see functions of, uh, of uh, these structures. One, we have amnion. I, I believe you've had something about amniotic fluid. Amnion is that structure that contains the amniotic fluid. And you know amniotic fluid covers the developing organism. Uh, what are the function of this fluid? It is not there just for the sake of being there, but amniotic fluid is responsible of keeping the temperature constant meaning that the temperature world of the developing zygote does not change, it remains constant. And amniotic fluid again prevents developing organisms such that even if mother makes some movement, that developing organism will not sense the, the movements. So it remains protected. So that fluid serves as a shock absorber. That's one of its another main function, shock absorbing, to make sure that that developing fetus uh, remains safe, even if mother makes a movement or maybe uh, somehow by accident we happen to fall slightly, the fetus will not be affected as long as the impact is not that huge. And uh, then we have another structure that we are referring to as a yolk sac. Yolk sac is a structure that is required for production of blood for the developing organism. And this happens during the first few weeks uh, and also months. Uh, it's usually useful as long as the river, the spleen, and the bone marrow of that organism are not fully developed to take up the function of blood production. So yolk sac is meant to produce blood cells. Then we have placenta. Placenta is a structure that develops from chorion. Chorion is an outer protective covering uh, around the the, the, the cell that is formed, the zygote, and uh, placenta is useful, is very uh, useful in the process of development. It is a structure that separates the mother's bloodstream from the, uh, from the embryo bloodstream. It Im ensures that the blood of the mother does not mix with the blood of the fetus. Again, placenta permits food and oxygen to reach the organism, and it also removes waste product. Uh, there's another structure that is a uh, umbilical cord. 
umbilical cord connects the placenta to the developing organism. So umbilical cord basically is just like a channel, a channel that connects the placenta to the developing organism. So we see the foundation for all those all those structures that we have just looked at are being formed during the very first stage of development, which is the zygote period, which we have said that it's a period that lasts for only two weeks. Then we move on to the next phase or the next period, which is referred to as the embryo period. And this period lasts for six weeks, meaning that uh, the stage will last from the second week to the eighth week. And it's a stage, again, that is very key, that is very crucial because of the main processes that happens during this stage. Uh, in this particular stage, there are two main processes that happen. One, we have a process that is known as organogenesis. Organogenesis is a process by which a foundation is laid down for all the body organs in a human body. That happens during the second stage of pregnancy, that's embryo period. And then uh, we see another process taking place that is referred to as cell differentiation. It's a process that leads to formation of three layers. And uh, these layers are, we have endoderm, which is inner layer. We have mesoderm, which is vitro layer and we have ectoderm, which is the outer layer. What happens is each of the layer that is formed is usually mandated with the duty of developing into specific body organs in a human body. Like a layer may be responsible of developing into heart, developing into the respiratory system, developing into the reproductive system, developing into skin and so on. So each of these layers has specific body organs which they develop into. And I want to give you this task, my student. I would like you to do this. I would like you to identify the specific body organs that endoderm develops into identify the specific body organs that mesoderm develops into and also the specific body organs that ectoderm develops into. Uh, these body organs that they develop into, they get to develop during this stage of development. And the moment or the time when the various body organs are developing is said to be a critical period. It's a very critical period, like when the brain is developing, the heart is developing, the ribs are developing, and so on. That time when a specific body organ is developing is critical because if there is any negative influence from the environment, it interferes with the development of that particular part of the body. Hence, the reason as to why we are saying that it's a critical period of uh, development. Then uh, we move on to the third stage, which we are referring to as the fetus period. Uh, fetus period uh, is the last stage. It is the longest stage of development, which I believe now you can tell it lasts from when to when. We say the first week, the first stage is lasting for two weeks. The second is lasting for six weeks. So the third stage will last for. We say that the prenatal stage of development will take that eight weeks. So it means that uh, this is a stage that you take about 30 weeks uh, from the eighth week to the time when the baby will be delivered. Therefore, this said, we say it is the growth and finishing phase, which is the longest stage of prenatal uh, period or stage of development. So what happens during this particular stage of development? In this stage of development, we see very rapid changes taking place. Uh, one thing that happens is that there is increase in size 
and the rate at which the fetus increases in size, it is said to be extraordinary because this organism really increases in size rapidly. And uh, the increase in size within months or within a few weeks uh, and uh, the, the various body organs begin or also continue to increase in size. Remember we said in the, in, 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 um, the, the stage that we just looked at, embryo stage, a foundation is laid for all body organs. If a foundation has been laid, now in this stage what we see, it is growth, growth of those body organs. And uh, the body organs get to grow and also reach maturity. The various body organs and uh, muscles, nervous system, they start to become organized and uh, connected to each other so that they can begin their functionality. Tiny ranks of the fetus uh, uh, begin to expand and contract in early rehearsal of what we are referring to as the breathing movement. That means that uh, when they are, they, they, are, they are expanding and contracting, it means they have grown and they are starting to take up their function, which is breathing. By the 12th of the week, external genitals are said to be well formed. And that means at this point, if the mother wants to know the sex of the child that she is expect, expecting, that can be established through scans. Fingernails, toenails begin to develop and the heartbeat tend to become strong, <coughs> strong such that they can be felt with a stethoscope. That's why as the mother goes for the reviews for clinics, doctors get to examine how the fetus is growing and developing. They can talk, can say that uh, the, 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 the fetus is doing well because they can feel the, the heartbeat. Uh, the first trimester get completed during this stage of development, that is during the, uh, the fetal stage of development. Uh, between the 17th to 20th week, the, the, the fetus is grown, is large enough, such that the mother at this stage can feel the movement of the developing fetus. Remember, during the first stage, that is during the zygote stage, during the embryo stage, the organism is very tiny, such that even the mother cannot feel that organism. The movement also cannot be felt. By this point, it is large enough such that it can be felt. Next, the age of viability gets to be attained during this stage. An age of viability is that age in which if that fetus is born early, that the day they are supposed to be delivered with the support that fetus can survive with some intervention uh, in hospitals. Uh, again, the fetus continues to grow and develop such that uh, can be responsive even to external stimulation, meaning that uh, they can sense, they can sense, for example, if there is music, they can also listen to that music, as the mother also listens to music. Uh, and as the fetus continues to increase in size, the rate of movement start to decline due to increase in size. And uh, therefore, as the pregnancy progresses to at the end, in the last few weeks, uh, the fetus normally assume an upside down position, and that is in readiness for birth. And once the fetus has assumed that upside down position, it means that it is ready for delivery. And when it comes now to that point when the fetus has assumed that upside down position, 
that kind of now ushers now from that stage of prenatal development and takes us to another stage of development which we refer to as perinatal stage of development. So perinatal stage of development is that stage that will, that starts with the commencement of labor and delivery of the baby. And uh, I would like now to leave this as a task, as assignment for you to do. I would like you to read about the process or that, or the, the, to read about the birth process. You know, that process that a mother will go through after labor. That process that leads to delivery of the baby, I want you to read about that process, discuss the, the process, discuss the stages that the mother will go through to deliver the newborn baby. So that brings us to the end of the lesson, and I wish you all the best in all your endeavors. It was my pleasure being with you and all the best. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.